right here is probably going to be one of the more polarizing videos I've ever done. So I honestly expect to ruffle some feathers with this one, but make sure you guys stick around for the full video and just know that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of nuance here that does in fact need to be discussed, especially given the fact that the person who is screaming the loudest about this for whatever reason chose to cut another uh, influencer on the platform thinking that maybe what he says answering back to this may uh, violate TOS. So this is going to be a relatively lengthy one. I'm going to try to hit every point that I can. Make sure you guys stick around as we discuss the morality of this entire situation. Are not vetted. Now we know that people that are getting hundreds of millions of dollars of U.S. money are not being vetted. So who do you guys check out? Uh, it's, it's interesting that you're combining the two, the, the, the border in this. But let's just, let me, let me just give me a second. It's not like it's not like we don't have a process at the border and there is a challenge there and the president does want to get more border patrol agents but this idea that just there's no vetting and there's no proper immigration enforcement going on at the border just does not does not comport with reality has asked for access to this park that is now currently in dispute it doesn't seem like they've gotten it uh they now are allowed to cut down razor wire yeah some democrats are saying the president needs to federalize uh the texas national guard so look, that's something that could happen I mean, look, I'll say this, uh, you know, the Border Patrol agents are now, as you said, allowed to cut through the wire because of what the Supreme Court has laid out. It's, it's unfortunate that we had to go there. It's unfortunate that there is a governor in Texas, Governor Abbott. Do has not give a damn. Now, you may say, well, come on, that's harsh. They care. They care. Somewhere in their hearts, they care about all the people suffering and dying. Baloney. Because if they cared, they would stop it. If you cared about the children being raped at the border, you would say no more. When Joe Biden came in, we had the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. He inherited success and he deliberately broke it. Democrats want these open borders. And this bill, this mysterious bill that is buried down in the basement of Chuck Schumer's office, all of you has a, have a living as reporters. Ask yourself, why have you not read the text of the bill? There's a reason. As bad as we think the bill- Border barriers on the Texas border. And that the federal government has final authority and jurisdiction on the border, not the states. The problem, CBP agents are actively engaged in human smuggling operations. I think we're past the point of these people are just flunkies. This right here is just outright treason. Well, seeing how it is that the federal government is not exactly going to be uh, doing anything, as I explained in two other videos, I don't see them doing anything at all, except possibly uh, eventually standing down, seeing how it is that Texas has, of course, uh, stepped up in this case. And of course, a lot of other governors have as well. I think that the uh, topic of the day uh, needs to be morality. Now, before we get to asking the question of who is actually, how do I say this, um, what's the overall morality of those involved here? This video primarily is going to be focusing on the Customs, Border, and Patrol agents. And of course, this is not a video to condemn Border Patrol or to even praise Border Patrol because obviously you guys have seen a migrant crisis. But the other day, Tim Poole released this video, which piece of clips I'm going to show you guys. And of course, he would also eventually have a sit down where he'd have an episode with Jesse Kelly. Now, guys, really quick. Jesse Kelly hosts the I'm Right. It's a part of the uh, the one, uh, it's a YouTube channel that's got Bill O'Reilly, Dana Lash, uh, some of those guys, old you know, guys who've been on Fox News and whatnot. I don't know about, too much about Kelly himself, except the fact that I've gone at with him and disagree with him on presidential preference, at least as far as Republican primary is concerned. But Tim, of course, had shut that episode down, fearing that uh, there would be a TOS violation. So therefore, I do not have that clip. But of course, I can kind of paraphrase what's going on here. So Tim basically feels that the Border Patrol or the Customs Border Patrol are responsible for what's going on, meaning that they are, how do I say this, kind of the bad guys in this situation. I'm here to explain why it is. It's not as simple as one might would think. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and play this first part. CBP agents are actively engaged in human smuggling operations. I have video proof. We have testimony from CBP agents. It's a fact. They know they're doing it. They'll keep doing it. They don't care that what they're doing is illegal 
because they've been ordered to do so. Despite the fact that you have the mayor of New York, Chicago, many cities, I'm, I'm citing specifically Democrat cities who are complaining, who are ringing alarm bells saying the invasion of criminal aliens is overwhelming our resources. Help us. Texas has made a move to defend its border by passing a law saying it is illegal to cross the border in this way without going through the proper process. Texas has deployed armed National Guard soldiers to remove the criminal CBP agents who are engaged in human smuggling operations. Where we go now, this is a this is perhaps a, this is a, it is a civil strife pre-Civil War period. Civil strife is academically, uh, as it's academically known, is the period before a civil war, such as bleeding Kansas. In the United States, before the Civil War broke out in 1861, there was a seven year period called Bleeding Kansas, where abolitionist and pro-slavery forces were killing each other. I spoke with Stephen Marsh, who I cite very often in regards to this issue, who said that after a certain amount of deaths every year related to political causes, you can say a nation is in civil strife. By the academic standard, the United States is in this period. We are now looking at a situation on the southern border following a Supreme Court ruling, which may lead to something akin to Fort Sumter. I know many of you already know the history, but first let me give you a brief on the news. The Supreme Court has ruled the federal government can go in and remove border barriers on the Texas border, and that the federal government has final authority and jurisdiction on the border, not the states. The problem, CBP agents are actively engaged in human smuggling operations. Good news is that it appears that Greg Abbott is obviously not relenting and he is still going out of his way to protect our borders. And you would figure that people in blue cities would, of course, uh, be on board with that. But uh, don't worry, we will see what happens over the spring. Now, before we talk about Civil War talk, I want you to know right now, Tim, when he says that he's talked to experts, he's only talked to two. He'll have people on the IRL podcast the person that he had on that I thought was probably the most realistic was Eric Prince, who in a lot of ways may have been telling Tim that it doesn't like it's going to happen, not in this case for Eric. But he keeps on going back to Stephen Marsh. I'll talk more about Stephen Marsh towards the end of the video. But let me go ahead and say this now. Stephen Marsh, number one, is a guy on the left. Number two, he is a guy from Canada. Number three, he still lives in Canada. And number four, he only comes to the United States to be on Tim's show. So think about that before we go forward. Now, I played a little bit longer than needed to be played right there, but I did it in length so that way you guys could kind of hear everything. Of course, there's obviously a little break here because you got to do some screen record cuts, things like that. Now, the thing is, it's right here. Customs, Border, and Patrol, they've obviously got a job here that's pretty daggone tough. And, of course, if you're somebody who's on the ground, and, of course, if you were getting orders from up top, chances are you're probably going to be, how do I say this, doing exactly what your superiors tell you to do. The reason why I brought up Jesse Kelly is because there was a Tia, is that Tim was scared of TOS violations, which I thought was kind of weird because Jesse in that 19 minute segment didn't really say anything. And of course, I'm not the biggest fan of Jesse Kelly, but he did not say anything that would have gotten uh, Tim thrown off due to terms and services. By the way, that episode is actually on the Tim Cast IR, was actually on the website itself. I'll try to link it there, but I don't know if you have to pay to be a member or not. I'm not a member of Tim Cast IRL, so I can't really say a whole lot about that. Now, Tim brought this up to Jesse Kelly, and Jesse Kelly, of course, said the, um, well, I can't play exactly what he said because of the episode, but it went something like this. Are you serious? Basically, what it was, was it was a guy screaming, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Basically, the Border Patrol, they're the enemy of the people. They, quite frankly, are just the enemy of the people but they are obviously ushering in the illegals. Now, granted, we already know what's going on down there. And of course, these people are in fact giving said orders or they're being given orders. And of course, according to this right here, the Texas National Guard, they're putting the razor wire up and Cupson's Border Patrol have backed off this. Now, that right there is as it stands at this moment in time. Things, of course, could change. Basically, what Kelly did was counter with, are you serious? Just like what you just saw, the old Spider-Man line with J.K. Simmons playing uh, Jonah Jameson. 
He basically said, are you serious? Because Tim is calling for the arrest of these Border Patrol agents. Now, the thing about arresting these Border Patrol agents, and I'm going to let you guys watch a little bit more, is that uh, it's extremely complicated to do so. And then you got to ask yourself a question, should that actually happen? We'll get to that here in a second, but let's watch a little more. Federal agents had been removing border barriers that Texas put in place to try and defend its state and the nation. When Texas came in and said, stop, A court ruled the federal government could not destroy these barriers. The federal government actually brought in tools to assist in the criminal alien human smuggling operations. The Supreme Court has now ruled five to four. The feds can remove these border barriers. Where we are now, the governor of Texas has vowed to defy any federal attempts to assert authority over the border jurisdiction at Eagle Pass. A Republican congressman has called on Texas to ignore Supreme Court ruling because Biden is, quote, staging a CBP, try to push past armed National Guard soldiers in Texas, which have already been deployed. Will Texas assert its right to protect its its borders? The question is, who will flinch? The scary reality is Customs and Border Protection are facilitating human smuggling and coyotes and other uh, criminal organizations and cartels. They are the bad guys. I want, I want every Customs and Border Protection agent to know this. If you work for the CBP, you are the bad guy. You are the evil we are seeking to prevent. You are engaged in criminal activities. This is not in dispute. This is a fact. Now, you may argue you have the authority in the jurisdiction, but when human smugglers are shuffling people into this country. And Texas has already stated it is illegal. Well, at the very least. Again, I can't say it loud enough. This right here is treason. Like I said at the very, very beginning of the video, at some point in time, you got to wonder when the hell it is that do we go beyond the point of flunkies and not ask ourselves if this right here is not outright treason or sedition. Either way, it is, in fact, against its own nation. Biden should be, of course, protecting his own border. But of course, we obviously have a president that is owned by China. Elections do, in fact, have consequences. And this right here is what the hell has been brought upon the American people. Now, the videos, they're obviously out there. I didn't mention this earlier, but obviously, I didn't really talk much about it, but the videos are out there. Speaking of videos, there's this one here that comes from another YouTube channel called Nuclear Grifter. I think he got it off of Twitter because the videos are all over Twitter. So that way you guys can see exactly how crazy this entire situation is. There's very few of them evading. How come? Well, because they allow them in. They don't evade because they'll let them come in. They'll they load them in the vans. They take them up to Phoenix, give them a three thousand dollar gift card and a cell phone, and send them wherever they want to go. You heard that right. Game the system and get rewarded with a big old chunk of cash. Communists, I mean Democrats, ladies and gentlemen. Please, by the way, if you are smart enough, you would know who I am. You are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're gonna know who I am. Pretty soon you're going to know who I am, says this poor asylum seeker. Also, he's probably this guy, an Islamic terrorist leader who was in prison for 12 years in his own country for attempting to overthrow his government. The Biden regime, ladies and gentlemen, class act. This is what happens when you allow communists to count your vote. But once again, though, the question remains about the morality of the situation. Do we punish the Border Patrol itself, the agents, or do we go after? Do we shift the blame to those who are giving out the orders? Remember, in this world, crap always tends to roll downhill, and oftentimes the people at the very, very bottom are oftentimes stuck holding the bag and therefore getting the blame. I've been through this This metric here. Obviously, we not being able to vet the illegals and also the fact that the Democrat bill that they had put in place or that they wanted Republicans to agree to was a bill that still allowed for 5,000 migrants to come in on average per week, which really means 5,000 per day. So obviously, you're not going to agree to this, this situation. And those who live in these very, very big blue cities should be applauding what Greg Abbott is doing. But we'll get to that here in a second. The thing is this right here, by the looks of things, you would automatically assume that Customs, Border, and Patrol are in fact engaging in some form of seditious activity. The problem is this right here. We've created this situation where Border Patrol is now officially pawns, whereas the military could very, very well become pawns as well. We'll talk more about that here in a second. I did do a video on this earlier 
because there was this video that was released by by Moraine, who for whatever reason chose to put this take out on TikTok about being ready to go. And I'm like, did you really and truly want to do that, especially at this point in time, and give the American people the negative, the, the possibility of, I don't know, people maybe thinking very negative in the military? It's still at the same time, though, the same thing obviously could occur right here to Customs, Border, and Patrol. But... The thing about Customs, Border, and Patrol and this situation is that unlike the clip I can't show you, Kelly also brought up to Tim that Customs, Border, and Patrol, there's a lot of these guys who are getting out and a lot of guys not joining. Tim even acknowledged that, but then Tim continued with basically what you're going to continue to see state here. Law. You're committing crimes. I wonder where this one ends up. I believe that when you look at the general sentiment of cities like New York and Chicago and LA, despite the fact that many Democrat politicians, these human smuggling operations, we can see that when the pressure is increased and these migrants, these criminal aliens are flooding the cities, the Democrat government panics. The sentiment is clear. The nation is opposed to the actions of CBP. I want to make sure this is clear for all of you. Everyone in the Customs and Border Protection who are facilitating this, I have this video here. I'm going to I want to play a little clip of it for you. You will be held accountable. I hope and I pray. I beg. Donald Trump, his administration. I hope and I pray. I beg. Donald Trump, his administration. Arrest these men. When you win in November, arrest them, each and every one of them, strip them of their pensions, make their families see that these men are criminals who broke the law because it was like easy. I said, I know that this video right here is going to be polarizing, but what I'm talking about in this situation is the overall morality. I'm talking about the morality when it comes to border patrol agents. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. The human trafficking is terrible. Obviously, it's God awful. It's terrible. Not only is the human trafficking terrible. You also have the possibility of additional crime. You've got the possibility of people coming into this country who may be on the terror watch list that we've not vetted. Number four, you've got another issue here, which, by the way, is the big cities. We've already done several videos on this. I want to make sure I go ahead and get that point out there. We know what the hell is going on in the cities. I do videos on all the time. Other content creators do videos on this right here, exposing what is going on in these very big liberal cities. These people, the liberal voters who voted for this nonsense, by the way, and of course, there's still a lot of them that had boots on the ground that still actually went and voted for this administration, especially in these cities. It wasn't just bullets. I can't say it that way, but I'm just telling you, the people still voted for this. They are the ones who voted for this. Some of them probably thinking it would never occur, but then again, though, a lot of these people probably actually wanted it. If you want to blame somebody for stuff like this, blame the white liberal voters who, quite frankly, did not have enough in their brains to see what the hell was going on or have enough compassion for their next door neighbor to realize that their life could be affected. Of course, they love to do the whole woke stuff and we're all for black people when in reality they don't seem to realize that what they're doing is actually replacing them. Maybe we should blame them a little bit more or maybe halt or say, hey, look, these right here are the people who are actually responsible for this. By the way, I'm not demanding anybody go do it. I'm just saying that I think they are more responsible. And, of course, the current administration itself, the people who are actually giving the orders, the people who are actually handing down the orders, the people who are also looking at the Border Patrol agents, and they are saying, look, you people are going to go to jail. You people are going to get fired if you do not do what it is that we tell you to do. It's called getting you by your paycheck. That right there is what the federal government has done. As far as what he was saying about the families, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second, but uh, I don't think the families should suffer as far as the Border Patrol agents' families. I think that Tim's going a little bit cray-cray uh, -cray on this one. Look, we get it. Customs, Border, and Patrol, they're obviously doing what they're told, and you guys can think whatever you want, but I'm not going to try to change your mind. I'm just simply giving you guys my personal thought on the morality of this entire situation. Customs, Border, and Patrol, they should obviously be helping the Texas National Guard out in securing the border. They should be helping out with this. But of course, like I said, you're going to get people who are going to give orders and they're going to continue to come down because crap obviously rolls downhill. A lot of guys don't want to do this. A lot of these guys are probably pissed off and they're probably upset with the situation as is. They know that they are bringing in the people who, quite frankly, should not be here. They're bringing in all the unvetted. They know this. So why am I not calling for their arrest? Let me tell you guys a quick story really quick. Back in 2016, 
Uh, it was November 2016 to be exact. I was sitting at a Hooters watching the UFC fight, which that night the fight was Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez. Now, bear with me for a second. The undercard fight was Stephen Thompson and Tyron Woodley. That night, in the Hooters where I live at, there is a convention center across the road. Me being a prior service Marine, I already knew that the place was going to be in, was going to have a lot of Marines there. Reason why is because Marine Corps ball. It's not always held on November the 10th, the birthday, but a lot of times it's actually held. I want to say the date of that event, maybe the 13th or the 14th. Trump had just won. Well, we had these guys come in, and this right here is what I'm very, very critical of. Now, I want you to know this really quick before I say this. I am not a guy who is pro-war, but I'm also not anti-war, meaning I'm not lumping myself in either crowd. I'm one of those guys who is, how do I say, the situation dictates when it comes to that. If anything, you can call me more of a moderate when it comes to foreign policy, That I do have some old neocon tendencies, okay? I'm more of a social conservative, more of an economic moderate right conservative, and of course, when it comes to foreign policy, I'm more of a pure, well, you can say moderate right too, but still the thing is, it's right here. That night, these Marines were all having a conversation, me being a guy who got out in 2007, me being a veteran of Fallujah, we have conversations, we share some stories, we're having a lot of fun. Well, these two guys come in, and they're from not from here. They're on a business trip, and they were going on about how Trump had just won. Now, me being a Trump voter, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad we avoided Hillary Clinton, but these guys are going on about this crap. And next thing you know, they get drunk, and they, for whatever reason, choose to start getting into it with these young devil dogs. They're pissed off, and they're getting into it with them over, why in the world did you not turn around and leave your post after what happened with ISIS, you should have gotten up and walked away. What? It's not like you can just get up and quit. That's not how things work. There are people out there on both sides of the aisle that are, in fact, complete, total dumbasses who don't understand this. It's not like these guys can actually get up and leave. So do they deserve to go to jail or prison, or should they be, uh, should they be charged with sedition? I don't think that is the case, but what you can do is what Jesse Kelly would argue over the course of his time before he got cut off due to the uh, potential TOS violations, which, by the way, didn't exist, is you can get rid of the people in charge. You can get rid of Mayorkas. You can get rid of, of course, Biden. You can hold them accountable. You can get rid of all the lower-level individuals who gave these men orders. You can get rid of those. If you want to do that there, chances are you will actually reform the Customs Border Patrol, and you chances are you'll probably get better people who actually work their job, better actual agents. Fact of the matter is, is that it feels to me like Customs Border and Patrol is being told, hey, go out there and go to this fire, you're going to lose your job. I think that right there is just being told, and I think a lot of these people know that, quite frankly, it is BS, and they know that, quite frankly, they're going to get pinned by people like Tim, who I'm going to play this last part for you guys, and then we're going to explain the actual mindset of this individual. And I want to make one final point before I go any further about families. They should, they should be seen as examples. This right here is a person who obviously has never worn a uniform, okay? Who's obviously never dealt with this. So you have to take people like this right with a grain of salt. By the way, and Tim's a former Bernie bro, it's not just people on the left. There are people on the right who are like this too. I'll probably talk more about that in a later video, especially when we get this topic of why people don't want to join the military. That one right there will probably be a polarizing video too, so make sure you guys stick around for that one. But let's get back on topic. Hey, let me say this. I use Tim a lot in these videos. Most of the time, he'd get something correct, like you'll see a common Tim Pool W, but you'll also see a common Tim Pool L. The Civil War stuff, I think he's quite frankly a little bit ignorant on that. The main person that he, he listens to, and I'll say this one more time, is Stephen Marsh, a liberal from Canada who already hates conservatives, and by the way, already thinks very low of the United States, who only comes to the U.S. to go on his show, doesn't know a, doesn't know a damn thing about what would happen in this nation if something was to occur. That's the truth. I'll go back, I mean, I'll go back, of course, here in a second and then probably re-edit this part. But the thing you got to understand about this particular situation is that Tim's thinking on this issue, especially when it comes to foreign policy and security, is not the brightest in the world. Granted, he's, he's correct. The border needs to be closed. I've talked about this on several occasions. But here's the thing. He did a video a while back in response to the Russia-Ukraine situation. And it was a man in Ukraine who had gotten arrested by Ukrainian officials, Ukrainian government officials. You want to know why he got arrested? I'll tell you. Because he was posting pro-Russia stuff on his Facebook page. You guys know my, my thoughts on the Russia-Ukraine war. I'm not in favor of it. I think it's two turds fighting to be a king turd on top of shit mountain. Got to use the old Sterling Cooper line. Sterling Simpson, my bad. 
The thing is this right here. When you are being invaded, if your next door neighbor, if your next door neighbor is sending out pro stuff that is pro the person who is invading you, chances are I'm going to want that person removed or gotten rid of because they pose a threat to me and my family. Tim was mad because Ukrainian officials arrested the perpetrator. He's gotten smarter over the years, but a big part of a, a big part of what I was just saying does in fact still exist inside him. So when it comes to someone like Tim, you have to take things that he says with a grain of salt. You got to acknowledge when it's a W and when, of course, it's an L. This situation to me is not so cut and dry. Why it is that I know that this video is going to be very, very polarizing, I have to tell you right now. At the end of the day, I don't think you can hold individual Border Patrol agents responsible for what's going on. Yeah, you can speak up, but the minute you speak up, somebody else is then going to speak up down against you. That right there is the morass that they are in. And of course, they're going to get blamed for this. And you guys could feel justified in blaming them if you want to. But I just want you to remember something else too. You're not on the ground down there taking orders from those up top. You're also at the same time not on the ground having to send information up and being told to F off. Just figure I'd go ahead and throw that out there. You don't, if Tim does not have the ability to actually empathize with what the hell is going on, Texas National Guard, they've been told by the governor, chances are they're probably going to end up doing exactly what the hell ends up happening, which, by the way, means if, when they, if they do get federalized, and obviously they're probably going to tell, even though there's going to be a mutiny, I said this in a previous video, at the end of the day, they're ultimately going to end up doing what it is that they feel their superior tells them to do. Border Patrol does not have that right now. They have a bunch of lower-level officials being told by higher-level officials, you will lose your job if you don't do our job. So it puts them in a pretty bad spot. So to say that it would be a, it would be best to arrest these people and say that they are criminals, I don't think that that is the best route to go here. Also, something else, too, about these Border Patrol agents, I'm pretty sure at some point in time, if Trump wins, they'll be there testifying as to what the orders that were given them. So you never know. With that right there being said, guys, please leave me your thoughts in the comment section. I really, truly want to hear what you guys have got to say. I already know that there's possibly going to be some negative comments. I already know there's probably going to be some negativity to this video. It's okay. I'm a big boy. I can take it. With that right there being said, though, please, though, hit the like button for the algorithm. Please also share the video. Please sound off. Please hit the notifications bell. And I'll see you guys later.